Praise the Lord and good morning. We're running a little late this morning. Uh, we just just running a little late. Isn't that great? <laughs> That's cloudy today. It looked like it's supposed to uh, supposed to rain. And uh, I've even got my this is my Louisiana towel right here. This is the one that I had that was wet and around my neck probably most of the two or three days we were there. Uh, Zach will, Zach will remember these towels. <clears throat> he and I had one and it kept us safe. So uh, uh, what a blessing. I'm glad we have most of that behind us. Um, we have delivered our supplies. Total of five, eight, eight palletfuls of materials, including generators, air conditioners, and brand new chainsaws. What a, what a fantastic thing. Uh, this week we're having a, a, a district conference in San Antonio at Hope Center. Uh, I'll be going, possibly Cody will be going with me, and then we have some other licensed ministers that are more than welcome to go. Even if you're not a licensed minister but you want to see how the program works, you're welcome to go. Uh, contact me and I'll give you the address to tell you how it all works. But uh, that's where the ministers come together to vote for things and decide uh, some of the things that we need to do, but <clears throat> that that is what's going on. And I, I pray that God is blessing you. This certainly has been a, a, a complicated season. Um, we do have a funeral up at the church this week, and uh, this comes just as an un, unfortunate announcement, but uh, Taryn McMahon, uh, Michelle Pierce's youngest son, has passed away. And uh, we are having a funeral up at our church. Now this might be new to some and I don't mean to shock you. Uh, there have been some pictures on Facebook already, but uh, he passed away yesterday morning. So um, <clears throat> we will be having a funeral up at our church on Saturday. A viewing will be from uh, 10 to I think 11 and then uh, the, the funeral will be at noon. I will announce it more clearly tomorrow. I just got, received one text so far. So I will announce it more clearly tomorrow. But that will be this Saturday at our church. And uh, it'll be for Taryn McMahon, uh, our funeral. And it'll be the funeral will be actually at noon, from what I remember. So I, I will announce it again tomorrow <clears throat> because everything will be just a little bit more solid. So what a tragedy. What a tragedy. The loss of, of, of a young person. Um, Parents, uh, I, I don't think there's anything that could be done in some situations, uh, but in most, make sure you keep your fingers in your kid's life. Uh, God help us. God help us. If it weren't for Jesus Christ, uh, my kids would all be messed up and I would be messed up and uh, life would be a totally different direction. But it, it almost always depends on your commitment to Jesus Christ. And then as a group, as a group, uh, as a group, enough said there. I, I just a troubling loss. That's all there is to it. Well, uh, let me let me talk to you for today about the three big distractions. Uh, Jesus was not only smart, but Jesus was amazing. He was brilliant. There's never been anybody, and never will be anybody like Jesus. Uh, Jesus was clearly. Uh, God robed in a body and the brilliance of that is just beyond comprehension. There's many times I've read the red letters in a red letter edition of the Bible where they put Jesus's words in red, kind of a novel, cool idea. And as you read them, you see how brilliant he is. When the woman was caught in adultery, they brought the woman, but not the man. So if they were caught, where's the man? How, how weird is that? How twisted is that so they bring the woman it's her fault uh and we still do that you know definitely uh a woman has the allure factor whereas the man normally does not but it's a participatory sin and what ended up happening was jesus said he who cast the who, who has not sinned cast the first stone and they all left how amazing is that how amazing is that who would have thought to do that i wouldn't have when i read his words i, I recognize that I would not have thought that way. From the first century world, with no TV or technology, he spoke into our lives and he put a finger on three distractions, three things that we struggle with. And out of Mark 4 and 19, but the worries of this life, the deceitfulness 
of wealth and the desires for other things come in and choke the word, making it unfruitful. Now, let me read that again. But the worries of this life, number one, the deceitfulness of wealth, there you go, and the desires for other things come in and choke the word, making it unfruitful. Now, it's kind of interesting here that he talks about the deceitfulness of things and then the desire for wealth. So the desire for things and the desire for wealth can be two different kind of deceitfulness. It's amazing that he's slicing it that thin, that there's a grouping of things that come real close together that can deceive you. It's not a simple, it's not simple. It's not just that it's all bad or all sin. He's dividing it up and making it clear that there's components here that are actually messing with you. Covetousness, uh, the desire for the, the other man's wife and adultery, and stealing are all kind of mixed together, but he's dividing them up so you can see them. The first one, the worries of life. Worry is when the visual, when you visualize something in the future that you can't control and assuming, assuming it's going to turn bad. And it's the opposite of faith. Worry is the opposite of faith. Faith is that I know it's bad now, but God is in control and I'm trusting him for an answer. And it's a kind of, you don't see it. And it comes about. It's it's supernatural. Worry is, okay, I'm going to believe the worst. It hasn't happened yet. And I'm going to trust in the fact that it goes bad, that it's going to go badly. The things we worry about in this life include family, jobs, weather, sports, <laughs> terror, terrorists, bad drivers, COVID-19, and many other things. So one of the areas is worries of life are going to deceive you. Worries of life are going to deceive you. The other one is the deceitfulness of wealth. Deceit happens when someone is or something leads you to believe something that's not really true. Believing a lie, deceiving, causing somebody to believe it. Um, wealth, say, um, <clears throat> wealth says, get more of me and everything will be peachy. That's a lie. Uh, just having more money. Money is so almost never. It, it, it's a... It's a lubricant to make life go forward at a little bit easier. Uh, Wealth does make things work a little bit easier. Um, But.